in San Diego, California at the home of the Padres and the Chargers. But tonight, it's the home from round number two of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series. 700 million pounds of dirt have been trucked in for this big event. Hello again, everybody. I'm Marty Reed, working alongside with 1991 Grand National Sport Truck Champion Walker Evans. If you were with us for round number one at Anaheim, you know that Rick Johnson rebounded from a dismal couple of heat races to take the main event. He's in his backyard here at San Diego, but it's also the backyard of one Ivan Stewart. Well, I'll say it is, and he's won two times in a row here. He's the only driver to ever win three in a row, and he did that in Las Vegas at the Silver Bowl, 1988, 89, and 90. I'll tell you what, it's going to be very interesting to see if he can do it again right here in his own backyard in San Diego. We talk about consistency being the key to winning a championship. Let's show you the driver's standings and you'll see what we mean. Take a look at fourth place. Rick Johnson wins the main event, but he finds himself with only 44 points behind Rob McCaffrey, Ivan Stewart, and Danny Thompson. But then look at number five. That is defending class champion Rod Millen, followed up by Roger Mears, Jimmy Johnson, and Roger Mears Jr. Now, there's also a manufacturer's championship at stake. You know this very well. You're the only manufacturer representative when you were driving for Dodge to knock off the Toyotas. Take a look at it now. Well, Ford's leading, Toyota, Chevrolet, backed up with a Nissan. And that's 111 to 92 as Ford on top of Toyota. Toyota going for their 11th manufacturer's crown in 12 years of racing in the series. Now, there's a third member of our broadcast team. His name is Mike Anson. He's pit side. Mike, what do you got for us? I'm down here with two of the guys that will be contesting the Grand National Trucks. Rick Johnson, who won the first race of the season, and Ivan Stewart, who's won the San Diego race two years in a row. Rick, what's it going to be like out here tonight? Well, there's a lot of hype because it's the hometown crowd. Ivan's won here two years in a row, and I've won the first race at Anaheim. So uh, it's a Chevy-sponsored event. I want to win for my first truck race in San Diego in front of the hometown. But uh, Ivan, a.k.a. old man over there, he's got some other plans. But my Chevy's running strong. We were quick in practice, so we're going to put our best foot forward. All right, Ivan, can you do it three years in a row and, and give the kid a little run here? Well, I tell you, Mike, the Toyota truck is running fantastic. Uh, we just won yesterday in Mexico, so there's not a reason in the world we can't come here to San Diego. Nothing like winning in a hometown crowd. Just nothing like it. Rick knows it. I know it. Believe me, there's going to be one heck of a race tonight. All right, I believe that, and we'll see just how it goes out on the track. Thank you, Mike. Keep pounding that pavement. We'll be checking back with you in just a few minutes. The Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road San Diego event is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Uh, Jimmy Johnson off the racetrack, and we will be getting this race started momentarily. Mark Canossola waves the green flag, and we're underway. That's through turn one, and there's the A-B lane. Now, Roger Jr., number six, leads up through the A side and Senior leads them through the B. They come out side by side, so right now both lanes seem to be even. Oh, and getting sideways is Ivan, the Iron Man Stewart. That's going to cost him two positions. The two boards get right by Ivan. Now he's got to fight alongside with Rob McCaffrey. There you see him both screaming by. Right now, the Mears gang running one, two. It's Senior, Junior, and then Danny Thompson. Thompson had one of his best qualifying efforts in a long time. Well, he certainly did. He qualified second, and he's got a good running car tonight. Now he has come up from row number three. And watch him on the B lane. There you see him there. He's got the two Nissans out in front of him. He comes into second. No. Roger Jr. manages to hold on to the position, and he'll have the left 180 degree turn number six right there, and so he holds him off one more time. In the meantime, out in front and starting to open up a good size lead, the number five of Roger Mears. Let's set it for you. There you see Rick Johnson. He's had some contact with the right rear quarter panel now away. Let's go on board and see what it's like inside. You know this feeling very well. Well, I certainly do. I'll tell you. He's just trying to find the quickest line around here so he can gather up, uh, looks like, uh, Rob McCaffrey in front of him. Uh, it's actually Danny Thompson okay. and then Rob McCaffrey, and so he does reel him in. He's gaining on him ever so slightly. Then he seems to lose it coming through that fast, sweeping left-hander. We'll watch this time as, yes, Roger Mears Sr. takes the B-side, but now the A 
side, taken by second place, Danny Thompson. And Rick Johnson follows him. Will it pay off? It does for Danny Thompson. He holds on to the position. It is still Mears Jr. in third, but he gets challenged on the inside. Ricky Johnson takes the position. So now it is Roger Mears Sr., Danny Thompson, Rick Johnson, and then Roger Mears Jr. That's your top four. Three laps remaining. Roger Mears Sr. has led from the get-go. The battle has been for second, third, and fourth. And again, it will be Danny Thompson maintaining second place over Rick Johnson. Well, I'm watching Rick's car. It looks like it's working awful good, especially on the corner. He's getting through them extremely good. Then the big question is, why can't he reel in Danny Thompson? Does the Ford have that much more horsepower here? It must be the straightaway speed. So right now, Roger Mears Sr., Danny Thompson, trying to reel him in, but Mears, who won three times last year on the Mickey Thompson Tour, finds himself in the lead here in heat race number one. Less than two laps remaining. Things have sort of settled down behind our leaders as well. The two Toyotas are running near the back of the pack. They're running fifth and sixth. White flag coming out. One more time around. And Ricky Johnson has reeled in second place Danny Thompson. Thompson takes the A lane and Rick takes the B. Now we're going to see who has the quicker car through the infield. Can Rick Johnson make it work? It looks like he's going to take the position. He's got his nose in front. Can he make it stick through turn six? He does. Well, he got a little tap in the back, but he was still be able to maintain that 180 turn. Roger Mears Sr. is going to take the checkered flag. There you see him coming through. The battle will be for second. There's your winner, Roger Mears Sr. Ricky Johnson second. And third place goes to Danny Thompson. Well, let's show you highlight action from heat race number one in the American Racing Wheels Sport Utility Class. And is it no surprise that Tommy Croft would be the man to beat? He was the quick qualifier. He and T.J. Clark worked their way from row number three to the front of the pack before the close of lap number one. And from that point on, it was all Tommy Croft as he heads to the main event for his eighth consecutive main event win in sport utility action. We'll find out if he gets it. We're ready now for the American Racing Wheels Sport Utility main event. Eight laps and on the front row it will be Joe Achundo and Ken Hodgson, Robert Gazen and Brad Pearson in row two, T.J. Clark and Tommy Croft in row number three. And the green flag flies and we are underway and we should point out right from the get-go that Achundo was not able to make the start of this race. They gave him some extra time, but he does not make the start, so we are down to five vehicles here in the American Racing Wheel Sport Utility. And right now it's a battle for the lead between the number 77 of Robert Robert Gate and the number 10 of Brad Person. Heading for turn number eight, and it is Gate who is in his first full season of running sport utilities, and he has got the lead over Person. Gaten is 33 years old from Albuquerque, New Mexico, actually running Mazda Power. There you see Gaten, and now uh, behind them, here comes Hard Charge and Tommy Croft and T.J. Clark. Now, Clark is in third place, and he is battling with the defending series champion, and Croft looking for his eighth straight. Oh, and there goes T.J. Clark over, and he gets back on all four wheels and continues to run, Walker. But, he's but he a has lost a right front wheel, so... I think that will slow him down. I do, too. <laughs> so T.J. Clark, who won here last year at San Diego, is not going to...
going to finish this main event. We're now down to four vehicles, and we are talking about Tommy Croft. You see Robert Gate. He's our leader. Second place is Brad Person, but he's not going to be second for long. Here comes Tommy Croft, the Tomahawk. Now, we mentioned he has won seven straight main events, Walker, since last season. He won our first round at Anaheim and six last season in a row. So he has, no one else has ever done that, and he is on the verge, if he can pull this off, of making it eight in a row. Well, I'll tell you, I think he can. His car looks good, it's working good, and after all, the Tomahawk does know his way around these Mickey Thompson Stadium. This is home court for him. He lives here in San Diego, age of 37. He's Jeep-powered, running out of the Ken Hodgson stable, and he is closing on person quickly. Well, he's got five laps to go, and... Uh, He's still trying to work his way around. In fact, I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't been able to close completely on person. He was up to him, and then all of a sudden, he falls back. Trying to see if maybe he's uh, got something wrong. Suspend I think there right is rear. something wrong with the car. The I right rear looks lower than the, it, than the rest of the vehicle. He may have broke a shot. Well, it does, but I think it's something to do with the motor or the drivetrain. The car is not accelerating. Even if it had a broken shock, it can still accelerate. The car is limping around. So uh, here goes Tommy's streak, it looks like, right now. So it, the seven in a row looks like it will end right there, that it will not be able to be eight in a row unless something happens to the two up front and now Gaten is being pressured by person so the battle is for the lead and for the first time since oh I can't even remember when midway through last season we're not talking about Tommy Croft <laughs> we're certainly not for that matter of fact we're not talking about either one of the Jeeps that uh, were basically so strong all year long person is 29 years old from Peoria Arizona and now he has got Toyota power and he is in second place right now trying to work his way around gate oh and he high centers there so that's not very good he loses about five vehicle lengths now finds himself having to get on the gas one more time white flag is out white flag means one lap remaining and Robert Gaten, who has never won on the Mickey Thompson Tour, will be the man to break the Tomahawk streak. In fact, if he hurries, he could lap Tommy Croft. And now Person's pulling over. So second place, Brad Person is pulling over as well. And Gaten, all he has to do is basically coast home. There's only one other vehicle out there on the same lap, and that is the number 11 of Ken Hodgson. So Hodgson will take over second, and there is Tommy Croft right to the left of your screen. You just saw a glimpse of him. He is lapped for the first time in eight races, and there's your winner. Don't forget to tune in Monday, April 25th, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific, for round three of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Tour from the Kingdome. Taking a look at heat race number one in the super lights, you know, we focus on the Nature's Recipe team because it's not very difficult when you have five vehicles out there, but this is not the kind of focus that Mercedes Gonzalez would want. She takes an end-over-end -end spill right on the very first lap. It hands the lead to 51-year-old team leader Rennie Awana. He takes the lead and holds on to it until there were two laps remaining. Teammate Greg George worked his way past front row starter Stacy Fay for second second with five laps to go and then it was a race between the two nature's recipe teammates with two laps to go they were side by side heading for turn one greg george made the pass and he made it stick from that point on it was to see who would finish in second and third and it would end up being greg george first rennie awano second and stacy fay third he raced number two of the super lights had all kinds of action for andrew buck it was all behind him as he got a great start from his front row position, took the lead, and really was challenged a couple of times, but never had the problems that everybody else did behind him. Casey Mears, the son of Roger Mears, 
passes Keith Ellers for second place. And then with three laps to go, watch what happens to CJ. He makes the wrong decision, and it ends up allowing Tim Baker to move around CJ to take second place. That wasn't the end of it, however, as with less than two laps to go, Casey Mears ends up going almost all the way over. He makes a nice save to recover and hold on to his third position. Andrew Buck came home with the win. Tim Baker finished second. Marty Reed, Walker Evans, Mike Anson with you at Jack Murphy Stadium, and we're ready now for the Superlight main event. Eight laps and on the front row, there you see him, Casey Mears, the son of Roger Mears. He's only 15. He's in his third season of racing. Alongside will be Stacy Fay in row two, Tim Baker and Rennie Iwana. Row number three, Andrew Buck and Greg George. They were the heat race winners. Rick Marshall and Lance Gromet in row four. Row five will be Michael Bentley and Rick Geyser. Row six, Troy Lynn Horst and John Zavinsky. Row 7, Todd Whitman and Steve Cobb. Alan Yaros and Keith Ellers make up row 8. Row 9 is Mercedes Gonzalez and Joe Price. And row 10, rounding out the 20-vehicle field, Mark Prince and John Sarna. Walker, as we get ready for the start of this race, if you're Casey Mears, he's won one heat race in his young racing career. What are you thinking about? Getting a good start, getting into that A lane as quick as possible. Green flag flies, we're underway, and Craig Casey Mears gets run into, but he manages to keep the vehicle moving forward. Tim Baker got into him a little bit. Now the question will be, can he hold the lead? Stacy Fay comes out in second place. Casey Mears, Stacy Fay, and Tim Baker. Oh, Baker does an endo, and then keeps going, but he's lost his helmet. His helmet actually came off. Baker's going to have to stop and put it back on. I'm sure stewards are going to make him uh, do that. He probably already has it on, but it's cost him a lot of position. Casey Mears, Stacy Fay, and now moving into uh, third place with a big run is Rennie Awana. Awana on the A lane. Casey Mears took the B lane, and he's coming out with a big lead. Casey Mears doesn't even turn 16 until we're in Seattle at our next event. <laughs> That's an interesting story itself. The Mears family have started them young, don't they? They certainly do. In fact, uh, he is in his third full season of super light racing, and he's already won one heat race, so he could still do it at age 15, which I believe would make him the youngest winner, but he's going to get some pressure because moving there is the number one of Greg George. It looks like he's going to get around Stacey Fay. Well, this is definitely a perfect class to start to get, uh, you might say, involved in stadium-type racing. This is the place. Greg George has taken over second place from Stacy Fay. She's third. Fourth place is the number five of Rennie Iwana. Right now, it is a nature's recipe one, two, and four position. And C.J. Mears opens it up. His full name is Casey J. Mears. He likes C.J. He takes the V-Lane. His confidence looks real good. I just saw him do a double that he hadn't been doing in his earlier heat rate, so I think he's feeling good. The car's working good, and he's got good confidence, and that's what it takes. Right now, there he goes. He takes the double, makes it. But Greg George, the man who has won more races in stadium off-road history than any other driver and holds the record here in the Superlight division as well, is closing down on Casey Mears. Four laps remaining. Greg George has 13 career wins in Superlight competition. Casey Mears has none. He's well, going to feel the pressure soon. He certainly is. And, uh, Greg George is working on him. Now that is Rennie Awana in front of Stacy Fay. That is third and fourth positions on the race course. We'll keep you posted as you're looking at that battle going on. C.J. Mears manages to hold on to the lead, but here comes Greg George. I'm surprised that Greg has not been able to reel him in any quicker. Well, both cars come out of the same crew, uh, same nature's recipe. I would bet they have the same kind of power. They both handle the same. We're looking at driving technique. Right here. Well, here comes Greg George. The battle is plumbing to a head here. Three laps remaining. He makes the double. So does Greg George. C.J. Mears. 
down through turn seven. Lap traffic's going to play a role in this before we get done with this race. Will There'll it? be two laps remaining this time by, and he still has about a seven vehicle length lead. Well, it certainly will, Marty. And I'll tell you what, here, Greg George is making a different move. He's using the A lane, something a little different. Well, and here comes lap traffic to play. Can CJ get around them? The lap traffic has allowed Greg George to close in. And Greg makes the double. CJ holds the lead by taking the tight line through turn number six, now through seven. Three more lap vehicles coming into play. CJ, there you get a good close-up view at him. White flag is out. He goes to the outside to get around some of this left track and then cuts back inside. A great move. And it forces Greg George to take the B lane. And this could be the race right here for CJ Mears. It could be the move of the race. Well, it certainly looks good for him. It really does. He's coming to come out. Oh, oh side by side almost. He manages to take the double. He's in front of teammate Greg George. Oh, but he opens the door. He can't block it off. Now it's a drag race, and Greg George is going to take the race away from C.J. Mears. He's got one turn to go. That's the experience, and that's what's going to be the difference in this great race at San Diego. Nature's Recipe finishes 1-2. Greg George first, and C.J. Mears second. Catch your breath. Stay with us when we come back. We'll have more off-road racing from San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. This portion of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road San Diego event has been brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Well, we're in the winner's circle with Greg George, who won the Super Light race. And boy, talk about pulling a rabbit out of the hat at the last minute you got by CJ. Yeah, that was a, that was an extremely tough race. Uh, you know, CJ's new to the team with us, and uh, boy, he didn't waste any time getting out front. And I worked my butt off to catch him, and, and I got lucky. Traffic gave me a break on the last corner. That's, it's got to be a heartbreaker for you out there in the lead. Did you, did you know he was that close? Uh, yeah, you know, actually, I'd, he was really close, so whenever I'd look to the side or when I was sideways, I couldn't really see him, so he, he was right on my tail, and what I did is I looked up in the screen, and I could I could see him behind me coming on the straight, and I went, oh, man, you know, and I can't see this guy. He was right on my butt. All right, well, we've seen some exciting racing, and it'll be exciting in Seattle. Marty Walker, back to you. Don't forget to tune in Monday, April 25th, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific, for round three of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Tour from the Kingdome. Well, you know, it's always great if you've got uh, plenty of factory money to help support your efforts, but obviously not everyone's uh, that fortunate. But there is one team here, among the many, that runs an extremely clean operation, and that's where we find Mike Anson now. Mike? Thanks, Marty. I'm down here in the pits with Kevin Smith, and he's a super 1600 driver who manages to make his money stretch a long, long way with a very professional effort. How do you manage to make that stretch all that far? Well, it's not easy. We get money from Castrol, who is our major sponsor. Toyota and Yokohama are our two associate sponsors. And with their backing, we're able to run an eight race series here in the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Series. And what we do is we budget our money from race to race. And we sit down at the beginning of the year and we go, we have to spend this amount of money on each race or, you know, nothing more than that amount of money. And we'll make that run throughout the eight race series. Now, what happens if you crash the car big time? Does that throw the whole season out of whack? No, because we go at the beginning of the year, we know the parts are going to get used up, the car is going to get crashed, there's going to be problems, so we take into consideration all the problems we're going to have, and we make that chunk of money per race happen to where we, we know we have that amount of money to make it last that race and go through that race and money for the rest of the year. Kevin, what are some of the benefits of having a major sponsorship such as Yokohama? That's a good question. There's many benefits, and I can show you a lot of them right now. Well, let's take a look. Kevin, you've got three different types of tires here. Which one does what? What we have here are three different tires from Yokohama. This one we'll start with is a Y352. It's a 15 inch. And if you notice, we took rubber out of the side here for better side bite. And this is a tire we'll use on most tracks for normal conditions. This one here is a 16 inch product for high speed, dry packed, really fast track. And this one here is for a tire we'll use in the mud, which is the rain conditions, if it gets really muddy and sloppy, which is a light truck tire. And this one, we can get many races out of here. 352, we can get at least one night's worth of racing. And this one will go about one race. 
Well, no matter what the track conditions are out there, Kevin Smith and his team are ready to go. Best of luck to you this weekend. Thank you. Grand National Heat Race number two. The green flag waves, and we are underway. Jimmy Johnson on the front row alongside of Rob McCaffrey. Now, remember, McCaffrey is racing with a broken left pinky finger knuckle, actually, and uh, very painful when he turns the steering wheel to the left, especially. Right now, Ivan Stewart challenging McCaffrey for second place. We've got a jam up back in turn number five. They get unhooked, but it is Danny Thompson and Ricky Johnson, two of the guys that did so well in heat race number one. Ivan Stewart takes the A lane. Jimmy Johnson takes the B lane. 18 years old. This is the youngest and the oldest competing in the series. Ivan Stewart at the age of 48 and the 18-year-old whippersnapper is out in front of him. And it certainly looked like that A lane was the quickest one for him that time. Johnson has opened up about a five truck length lead. In fact, Ivan Stewart has got his mirrors full. If he had a mirror of uh, Rob McCaffrey in the Ford and Rod Millen coming on strong. Millen needs a strong heat race here. He is starting to lose contact with the leaders in the driving championship already. Jimmy Johnson in front. Ivan Stewart looks like he may get around and hold on to the position before Rob McCaffrey can take it away from him. So it is still Ivan Stewart second, McCaffrey third, Rod Millen in fourth. All the cars seem to be working very good. I mean, I think they've come out with the right combination on their tires. Every one of them seems to be making these turns at a good high rate of speed. Now remember, Jimmy Johnson has not won a heat race or a main event since coming into Grand National Sport Truck. He's only raced. This will be his fourth Grand National Sport Truck race. So, you know, this would be a big moment for him if he's able to hold off the Iron Man. Well, it certainly would, but the Iron Man has got the pressure on him. He is closing. Okay, now, you've been in this position especially when it was Robbie Gordon that was uh, tangling with you. If you're Ivan Stewart right now, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to drive my lane, the one I like the best. I am going to make certain that I get through the turns as quick as I possibly can. What I don't want to do is follow him because if he bobbles, I can't get around him. I want open racing room, and that's what Ivan's got now. Ivan Stewart on the A lane. Jimmy Johnson on the B lane. They're coming right at you. And it's still Johnson, Stewart, Rob McCachron, and Rod Millen. So it's Chevrolet, Toyota, Ford, Toyota. That's your top four. When it comes down to the A, B lanes for the Grand Nationals, boy, it looks like they are dead heat even. Ivan oh, Stewart's all he's over. done something different. Okay, I like that. I like that kind of thing. All of a sudden, it's a change-up. Took Ivan off guard, and look at He's got about three car links and going away. Great move. I Jimmy love it. Johnson. So with two laps, actually one lap remaining, he makes the move of the race, which may be the turning point because Ivan was closing. One turn remaining. The 18-year-old is going to pull it off from nearby El Cajon. He's got his first heat win. He does. Ivan Stewart second. Third place to Rob McCachron. Rod Millen is fourth. Party of my house! <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada, we're coming your way. April 23rd, round four of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series. We'll be there at the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. We hope you'll be there, too. In Super 1600 heat action, there was a lot of action up front. Jimmy Nichols took the early lead, and watch what happens behind him as Marty Coyne moves up from his third row starting position to pass Aaron Hawley for second place. But Coyne was going to have his own challenge in the name of defending champion Jerry Welchel. Welchel gets past Coyne with three laps remaining. Now that's for second place. One lap later, Jerry Welchel came around Jimmy Nichols to take the lead. He would pull away from there to take the win and Jimmy Nichols would finish second. T.J. Clark would end up third. Time now to set the main event in Super 1600 here at Jack Murphy Stadium. 12 laps of action and on the front row of the starting grid it will be San Diego resident Marty Coyne, T.J. Clark alongside. Jimmy Nichols and Jerry Welchel will be in row number two. Bill Goshen and Gary Gall will make up row three. 
Row four has Wes Banks and Corey Witherill in it. Kevin Smith and Aaron Hawley make up row number five. As we look back through the starting field, you will notice when we get to the tail end, Eric Harris did not make the call. So we are going to be down to 11 vehicles in this final in Super 1600. Now remember, Jerry Welchel won at our last stop at Anaheim. Defending champion at in San Diego is in the front row, number 10, Marty Coy. And in through the A lane, it's Marty Coyne, followed by Jimmy Nichols, T.J. Clark, and Jerry Walsh will take the B side. Coming out, and with the lead, looks like it's going to be T.J. Clark. Can he hold on to it? The inside now belongs to Marty Coyne. They get into each other a little bit. Jerry Welch moving to the inside, and oh, on top of, and going over, and right underway. Unbelievable action as Jerry Welch survives an end over and collision with Marty Coyne. Ends up right where he started the race in fourth position. And what I'm so amazed about, he doesn't come up with a flat tire. When you start doing things like that with a, a car, of any kind, usually you suffer a tire failure. It has allowed T.J. Clark to run away and open up about a seven vehicle length lead. Gary Gall is in second. The battle is for third right now between Marty Coyne and Jerry Welchel again. And here comes Jimmy Nichols who got backed up in that uh, initial contact uh, also. So T.J. Clark goes through your shot. There comes Gary Gall. He finished fourth in the points last year. Marty Coyne third, Jerry Welch is fourth. All right, which lane do you like now as the race has progressed, Walker? Well, I, I think the uh, B lane right now seems to be working for the buggies. I could not say that when the Grand Nationals were out there, but somehow the buggies are working a little quicker in the B lane. Let's update you. Kevin Smith has stalled over in turn number six. It looks like he is not going to finish this race. D.J. Clark, Gary Gall, oh, and there goes Marty Coyne into the hydro barrier and through it. He is trying to work his way free, but he is well into, and now he's going to try and plow through it, turn around, and drive back out, and they're going to tell him to shut it off. So your defending champion here at San Diego is now out of this race. All right, let's go back and see what exactly happens to Marty Coyne, Walker. Well, Marty's trying to make a pass on the outside, coming up against this jump like this, and what happens, he gets a little bit over to the right, and in comes another car, clips him, takes his sidebars right off, sends him for the wall with a perfect shot between the barricades. The water goes flying, and there goes Marty through the barricades. We are ready to go green flag racing. Marty Coyne is at the back of the pack. They will let him retake the green flag here. And T.J. Clark has his hands full. He's got number four, Gary Gall, and he's got a flat left rear. T.J. Clark gets a flat left rear. This is going to cost him all chance at winning his first Super 1600 May. And guess who is the big beneficiary? Number one. He wears that number for a reason. He's won the championship two years in a row. Jerry Welchel. There is Jimmy Nichols as he's trying to reel in Jerry Welchel, but I just don't see it happening. There's Corey Witherell doing a great job of coming back after the head knock that he took in round one in Anaheim. We're down to the white flag, Jerry Welchel, and it seems like this man in quest of his third straight championship, he won here. you got to remember, he won back here in 1991 at San Diego. Looks like he's going to make his second San Diego victory and his second in a row on the 94 tour. He won back at Anaheim. He's just got two more turns to negotiate. He puts another lap on the slowing. T.J. Clark, here comes the checkered flag. It'll be Jerry Welch doing it one more time. Second place will be Jimmy Nichols, and third place will be Corey Witherell here at round number two at San Diego. Welcome back to San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. I'm Marty Reed, and we are getting ready now for the Grand National Main Event. You saw the heat races. Let's take a look, Walker, at the points championship right now for the drivers because it's really tightened up. Rob McCachron's lead is dwindling. He is down to four points over Ivan, the Iron Man Stewart. Rick Johnson is now third with 73. Danny Thompson and Roger Mears are tied for fourth. Each has 67. Rod Millen makes a 
substantial gain into sixth place with 63. Jimmy Johnson, with the heat win, moves up to 52, and Roger Mears Jr. falling behind right now with 39. So now it's time to find out who has saved what little they have left. You are on board with Rick Johnson. He's on the front row as we set the starting grid for you. The pole sitter will be that man, Danny Thompson, in the board. Johnson Chevrolet alongside. Row two will have the Iron Man, Ivan Stewart, and Rob McCachran, current points leader. Row three, Roger Mears in the Nissan. Rod Millen's Toyota alongside. Then in row four, Jimmy Johnson in the Chevrolet. Winner of his first heat race tonight. And Roger Mears Jr. alongside in the other Nissan. The start oh so critical. Mark Kanasula waves the green flag. We're underway. 12 laps of racing. Danny Thompson leads the A-lane charge. And it is Rick Johnson on the B-side. Down into turn number four, and it is Rick Johnson with the lead. The two Fords battling for second. Rick and Johnson just showed him that uh, B lane was the quickest that time. Oh, and uh, back in the back there, you saw Rod Millen sort of piggyback with Ivan Stewart for a second. No harm, no foul on either car. Down into turn one, 11 laps remaining. It's Rick Johnson on the bicycle for a little bit. Second place is Danny Thompson. Third place is Rob McCaffrey. And fourth and fifth are the two Toyotas of Millen and Ivan Stewart. Remember, Ivan Stewart trying to win his third straight race here at San Diego. Oh, Danny Thompson hits the hydro barrier. And it's going to cost him at least four positions. Well, it certainly does. Both Toyotas pulled out front on that one. Let's reset. Oh, Rick Johnson's on the bicycle. What a great save. But that certainly put McCackern right up there with him. And now we got a little bump and rub. This is the roughest we've seen it in the first two rounds of racing. Both Toyotas side by side. Boy, nobody giving quarter anywhere. And the, Toyo the, and the Toyotas, Toyotas actually hurt around. themselves right there. Cost themselves a couple of laps. I, oh, and the, one of the Toyotas, Rod Millen, goes over. He's back on all fours. You can see him back there with the damage. Let's reset this for you. Rick Johnson and Rod Bob McCaffrey running 1-2. Then in third place is Ivan Stewart, but he's well back. Right now, Ricky Johnson, he seems to be hiking up every time down through corners one and two. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if maybe a sway bar hasn't given up or broken. It is getting severe amount of hiking on that one turn right there. Rob McCachron not surrendering. It is Chevy versus Ford. The crowd is going absolutely crazy on board with Rick Johnson. That's what it looks like when you're the leader. Well, he's out front right now. He's just trying to drive the best he can, the quickest he can, but to remember, this car does like the hike on this high speed left hand turn. Right there, he does go up on two wheels again momentarily. Oh, and little contact there. Rob McCaffrey backs out just long enough to keep from pushing Johnson all the way over. It'll still be Rick Johnson, the Chevrolet, in first. Rob McCaffrey's Ford second, and now Rod Millen is closed in in the Toyota. Well, I believe that's Ivan that's pulled up right there. Right here, right. It is Ivan Stewart. Even though the Toyotas were banging amongst themselves, uh, Ivan has pulled right up, and he's working on the third place. He's in third, working on the second. Seven laps remaining. You're on board with Rick Johnson. You've seen this routine enough. You know what to do. Oh, and he gets a little sideways. Was that a tap off of uh, McCaffrey? Uh, a love tap. Yeah. Ivan Stewart trying the outside. Look at this. The battle for second is heating up. Rick Johnson's got about a four, three truck length lead. Rod McCaffrey now has his hands full with Ivan, the Iron Man Stewart. Well, he does. Ricky Johnson does have a little bit of breathing room, but I'll bet you that McCaffrey will come back up for another, uh, you might say, a little bit of pressure put back on him. All right. Catford's having his hiking uh, uh, escapade, you might say. He got it up uh, nice and high, made a nice save, but it could cost him second place if Ivan could get around. There you see the lead, and there is the battle for second. McCaffrey manages to hold on to second position. We should tell you, Danny Thompson is a distant fourth, and Jimmy Johnson is a distant fifth. Rick 
Johnson in the Chevrolet. Comes by with now five laps remaining. And you're right, Walker. He has definitely got some handling problems on that and, Chevrolet. And, and look at McCaffrey's got handling problems. I'll tell you, what I really think it is, is this clay. The traction is just phenomenal for these cars. Well, we now have a new second place. That'll be Ivan Stewart taking over the position as Rob McCaffrey loses a spot. So now it is Chevy, Toyota, and Ford. Well, Ricky Johnson better drive a very clean race and not hike or we're going to stand. Ivan Stewart just hikes, loses another couple of car lengths to Ricky Johnson. Down into the AB lane and both Rick Johnson and Ivan Stewart take the B side. Rob McCaffrey takes the A lane. Will it pay off? Not this time. It's still Rick Johnson, Ivan Stewart, Rob McCaffrey. On board with Rick Johnson. Watch as we pan out front. You'll see what happens. Don't get seasick on us. Oh, Rick gets a little sideways, makes a nice save. Three laps to go. The track is getting rougher. They are hitting those vocals, and that's causing a little bit of the hiking as well. This is still anybody's race in that front three group. It could be Chevy, Ford, or Toyota. It could be Rick Johnson, Rob McCaffrey, or Ivan Stewart. Stewart maintains second place. You can bet one thing. Ricky is driving flat out. He wants this win. He wants those Chevrolets up front. Now, remember, he won round number one in Anaheim. Here Ivan, wants, Ivan wants that third win. Two laps to go. Ivan won here in 1992. He won again last year in 93 in San Diego. It Ivan, is his home track. It is Ricky Johnson's home track. The fans are literally on their feet. Ivan just let Ricky know he's there. A little tap. And we've got Rod Millen over in his side when a yellow flag comes out. Ivan has to duck to the inside. It will be a full course yellow. So with two laps remaining, we're going to go to a full course yellow. Stay with us. We'll have the dramatic conclusion of the Grand National Sport Truck Final right after this. Marty Reed, Walker Evans, and Mike Hansen back with you, and we have been told that the accident scene has not been cleared in time. As Rick Johnson comes by this time, he will take the checkered flag. This race will end under yellow. Rick Johnson will finish first, while uh, Ivan Stewart second, and Rob McCaffrey will be third. So that is going to be the way it will finish out here in round number two. All right, congratulations. Now it's on to Seattle. Yeah, we go up to Seattle. Uh... But I can't, you know, I can't end without thanking a lot of people. Chevrolet, who put the best two trucks on the track. I got to congratulate my teammate, Jimmy Johnson, who just did a stellar performance in that second heat. Uh, also the Nelson, Nelson crew, all the guys, Ivan, John, everybody. Um, they did an awesome job. And uh, just thank the good Lord for giving me the ability and the, the opportunity to go out there and do what I can do. All right. Congratulations to Ricky Johnson. Now let's throw it back up to the booth. Walker, Marty, back to you. The Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road San Diego event has been brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. For Mike Anson and Walker Evans, I'm Marty Reed. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time we go racing on ESPN Speed World. This has been a presentation of Mars Incorporated in association with ESPN.